All right. We get asked a lot of times, what is, what is Brighton's value prop? And I'm going to pick on an easy target now with Snowflake. We talk a lot about zero trust, right? And although it's buzzword, it's popular now and it's actually accurate. Brightest focus is not on authentication. Authentication is going to get beat, period. Complexities of username, passwords, MFA, biologic, blood samples, whatever you want for the authentication piece will eventually be compromised. Where there's value prop and what Brighter provides is actually separating out the authorization, the authorized permissions. What that means is even if someone takes credentials and they can log into an environment, they do not have access to the roles, groups, or permissions they may need unless they also come through Brightiv where decisions are applied. This doesn't apply only to humans. This can also apply to non-person entities, things like service accounts, tokens that do routine tasks. So what does that look like in practice? In practice, that looks like this. Let's say we have a Snowflake environment and we have these credentials of a service account used by data scientists and something like Jupyter Notebook or just anywhere, literally. You don't want to use MFA. It doesn't necessarily make sense for the application, but they're sharing these credentials. What Brightest Value Prop is when you log into Snowflake and you log into your workbook, even though you are able to authenticate, you do not have access to anything other than the public role. This is a standard zero standing privilege sort of concept. I try to execute a task, it tells me you do not have access to the database. If you want to use this, so you've already authenticated into Snowflake, Brightest Value Prop is in separating out those what we call profiles, roles, groups, permissions. In this case, we're explicitly calling a database, giving it a specific role and a specific warehouse. So when you check out this access for the next 59 minutes, this account demo user that we logged in with now has the ability to elevate its privileges to what we've given it. There can be controls applied to this, meaning are they on the VPN? Did we force another factor of MFA? Is it within working hours? There's tons of controls we can apply to this, but now you can see that I have update sample data role along with a small compute set and I can run the access I need. So effectively, we are separating authentication from authorization and we're making an author de authorization decision point where we're saying, have you stepped through all the policy controls that Brightif has in place to give you the actual permission of what you're trying to functionally execute? In this case, that role, sorry, that Brightif profile customer data access gave you access to that database, to that role, and to that permission. Brightif called Brightiv's APIs called Snowflake's APIs. We assign the access to that role for 59 minutes. And now at this point, we're just checking that back in. So I can show you again, at the end of the day, whether someone checks it in or that 59 minutes runs out, we are going to remove those privileges and send that account back to a state of zero standing privileges. This is very powerful um, in practice. And it's very powerful, especially in those automation use cases we talked about, where we're separating out authentication from the authorization. So now that that's checked back in, right, we refresh our Snowflake screen, we are moved back to a zero standing privileges state, where all we have again is public, we cannot execute a function.